So right now we're still in the process of figuring out the best way to communicate my work with Mark. What the plan is, is to send bi-weekly updates on everything that I'm doing. I'll get there in person like once a month just to have conversation back and forth about what the next step should be. So you've been there now in Stockton for a few months. Can you talk a little bit about what the rationale is at a high level for UBI and how you foresee this uh, experiment unfolding? In Stockton and really in America, there's a lot of people who are struggling right now. And in Stockton, that's what we're trying to address. We're also trying to be a demonstration site for the rest of the United States to show the efficacy of this, this concept. And so what I'm most interested in seeing and will be measured by the research teams is everything from where they're actually spending the money, so we'll have that data, but also how has your mood changed on a day-to-day -day basis? Right. Are you less stressed now that you know that you have $500 coming in, not only this month, but next month and the month after that? Uh, do you have more time to spend with your children? Um, were you able to save any of that money and invest it back in yourself in some way? This is something that's already picking up national steam, and I hope that this year and a half passes, and now we have something to point to, like some evidence saying, hey, this is something that can work. Are you superstar? In advising Moran, one of the things that I've already said to him and that I'll continue to remind him as he goes through this is that the effect of a policy isn't always what one expects. I think it's really important to do the best research you can to get to the truth. As a scientist, I'm rooting for something. No doubt about it. But I also regard as sacred the mission to make sure that the assessment we do is not affected by what I want. That is the most sacred commitment. The most sacred. And so what our number one job is as social scientists is to expose flaws. Flaws that might sometimes be a consequence of the priors that we bring to the table when we design an experiment. But that's our job. Can someone tell me what would be the ideal experiment? Social scientists and the university more broadly play a significant and increasingly significant role in thinking about how to design policy in the sense that we've developed the tools and organize the data in a way that enable us to really understand the consequences of these policies. But the issue is, you know, we have limited resources as a country, as a state, as a city to spend on these policies. And so money that's spent on a policy that's not effective could actually be spent on a policy that is effective and could have a much bigger impact. If we allow programs that are designed to serve certain objectives, like say reduce poverty, to persist even though they're not delivering on their mission, we're wasting the country's money. And so one reason why we want high quality evidence brought to bear on the existing programs is because we want to do our job as efficiently as possible. It's like the visible hand. That's what you have with, with, with public policy. You don't always have the invisible hand to root out inefficiencies. It's the visible hand. What's the arm of the visible hand? Science. So we're moving into a zone that's less studied right now. This is such a unique and really exciting opportunity that SEPA is actually involved directly with what's on the ground in a major city like Stockton that is encountering so many challenges economically. And having somebody there in real time as the policy is being implemented is actually hugely advantageous because by having that communication, you could say, you know, all of these different potential outcomes that would be important to track, you know, you could sort of make those decisions in real time as it's happening. Understanding what goes into research on these policies, I think, can help people become better informed and also make better choices through voting and through participating in local government and hopefully get inside the black box of what it means to generate a policy and then what it means to kind of understand whether it's a good policy or not. There's a ton of evidence out there on the effects of these existing programs. Mm -hmm. Things like welfare, things like food stamps, housing assistance, and so forth. But there's very little evidence on a program like this. And it's a very different way to provide relief to people who are struggling economically from what we've done in the past. And so things like what does it do to people's allocation of time? What does it do to the amount of money that people save or the amount of money that people allocate to their health care or to their food or to their housing? but also does it influence what people do? Mm -hmm. I think to the extent that we can determine the efficacy of this project in changing the individual circumstances of people's lives, 
I think that's going to be a compelling argument for asking questions around how can we create policy that really deals with people's issues. You know, it is a formal academic research project, but I do have the hope that it improves these people's lives. I always knew that public service was what I wanted to do, but it's just been confirmed for me in the most real and like visceral, like in my face way possible. When I was at school here at Stanford, I worked extremely hard, but being in Stockton and doing the work that I'm doing, that sense of personal fulfillment is something that I understand people go their whole lives without finding sometime. And so I'm grateful to Seeper because this is an opportunity that I think has set me on a path, on a trajectory, and I just plan on running with it.